All right, and Gina, can you hear us okay? There she is. Gina, can you hear us okay? I am here. I have arrived. Awesome, awesome. I'm going to go ahead and make you the <laughs> presenter so we can see your screen. Okay. And it's going to ask you if you want to be a presenter, and it's going to ask you if you want to show your screen. I'm going to say yes. And there we go. All right. So let's go back to this one. And this, and dashboard. Now, does he need to sign into his, um, his portal to access AFPDS? You can. You can do it actually two different ways. If, it, if it's going to be just him that's in it, um, primarily, um, you can actually go through your secure portal and there's a, watch, your secure portal looks like this at the top. And you can just hit this AFPDS button mm -hmm. and get I don't it think that I've, way. I don't think I've, I've actually uh, registered with this one, I don't think, have I? Yeah, um, this is what you used when you did your worksheets to begin with. Oh, okay. Yeah, so your worksheets, you see how it says right here, your worksheets? Uh -huh. That's if you had, if, if you, this was a client, so it would have your worksheets in it. So when you when you log back into that, you can go over here and there's going to be a button that says AFPDS. Uh -huh. If it's not there, you can always go to access.usfcrgov.com. Now, mm -hmm. when did you, um, when did you come aboard? Just recently? Yeah, yeah. it was like uh, Friday. Okay, so once we have, do, are you, do you have our website and all that stuff that we're that we're building? Uh, yeah, in the process of it, yeah. It says that his ASPDS is active in Salesforce. Right. Okay. So when all of your your website and all that stuff is done, I'm I'm going to mm -hmm. request that we actually have the same conversation because I'm going to teach you a lot of stuff today. But once okay. you have your website and you're ready to start calling these procurement officers. You're okay. gonna, you know, you're gonna be like, oh, that's right, I forgot you said that. So once okay. all that's done, we're gonna redo this again because there's, there's a lot of information, but it's all really cool stuff, and you can tinker around in here until all that other stuff is done. Sure. <laughs> can you, ha Gina? Can you hang on one second? Let me go grab my recorder. It's not on the phone. Let me grab my recorder. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Sorry for the delay. Okay. That's okay. I wanted to let you know that we're recording this so that we can send you a link to it when we're done too, so you'll be able to hear it again, so that you don't. Yeah, that that's way. fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So when you first log in, you're going to come into this page. This is what they call your dashboard. And this, mm -hmm. it updates every five minutes. So these numbers are going to change periodically when you log in. You could log in today and see there's 51,807 procurement officers, otherwise known as contracting officers. And then tomorrow you could log in and there could be 52,706. 
you know, it just because we update it so much. And mm -hmm. it updates every five minutes. That's one of the benefits of having this program. Um, there's all these, these are the projects that are open right now. Uh, these are other prime vendors that have been awarded other contracts. Um, that you, I'm going to show you that you can actually do some subcontracting with guys like that. Um, mm -hmm. These are the agency offices, and agency offices are like, if I wanted to look up a specific, um, maybe a specific, or maybe I want to do everything for Homeland Security, and I want to find the procure, procurement officers or what Homeland Security has out right now as far as projects, et cetera, you know, like if you're going to focus on, on one particular agency or whatnot. Um, here's your categories. So like your NAICS codes that you have, mm -hmm. um, your NAICS codes, we can find, you know, go into the category section and find out what particular projects may or may be open in that particular category. It'll tell mm -hmm. you the definition of the category and any similar categories that you might want to consider adding to your registration down the line if it's something that might also relate to you. And these are federal agencies. It's sort of like the offices, only some agencies. Um, sort of babysit offices, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. Homeland Security babysits FEMA. You know, that that's how those kind of things work. So mm -hmm. these are the actual agencies, like the Department of the Navy would be an agency. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, this is the first thing, and, and I think this is the best part of AFPDS, because it has every federal procurement officer in the country. Okay, mm -hmm. Now, what is it that you do? Uh, well, you know, basically we're just going to be, a, we're starting out brokering right now. Okay, so is it any, logistics? Any, any, yeah, anything and everything as far as, you know, medical supplies and um, and so forth. You know, medical supplies to rock salt. We're looking at a contract for rock, rock salt right now. Okay, medical supplies, rock salt. Let me ask you, that this is not a government website. This is your company no. website, right? Yes. Yes, it's our proprietary system. The government's actually tried to want to buy it from us, but we're not giving it up that easy. We worked really hard on it. They're getting ready to do phase two of it. So, uh -huh. um, you know, let me see if I can find a logistic. Oh, it's, I forgot the code. I know what it is. That's okay. See right here, when you don't remember what the code is, you can put in a word and it'll mm -hmm. bring up what the codes mm -hmm. are. So process, physical distribution, and logistics mm -hmm. consulting service. That sounds kind of like you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Logistics. So the the term logistics is 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 can mean lots of different things. It can be you know trucks. It can be supplies. It can be yes. You know it's just that's just the definition when I of think it. of when I think of logistics, logistics to me means getting something from one place to another and how we're going to get it there. There you go. So it's it's the logics of you know getting an object from here to there, whether it's a you know rock salt or medical supplies or what have you. It's, there's got to be somebody that's handling the logistics. There's actually called, uh, in the federal government, there's an office of logistics <laughs> that, mm -hmm. you know, they, they do stuff like that because they always got to have the brains behind it of who's doing it. So mm -hmm. um, so let's say that we have all of these. We, we can take these uh, procurement officers here and we can narrow down anybody who has an open project or who, who has awarded a project under this particular NAICS code. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we're going to put the NAICS code in there. We want to hit Apply Filters. When you're doing this and you're applying filters, you want to put in one filter, and then you want to put in, you know, Apply Filters. Then you want to add in, you know, something else, and then Apply Filters. Because mm -hmm. if you add them all in at once and then apply the filters, it just doesn't, it doesn't see how it works. It, it gets all confused. So just put in one, add filter, put in another one, apply the filter. So now that we've applied this filter, we can see any pro anybody that has an open project or has been awarded uh, an open project, or has, I should say, awarded an open project. You can see when they were last active, right? So you can mm -hmm. see somebody that's been, you know, what do they do? Now, let's say that we want to go look at uh, Brandon here. He's with the VA hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's Brandon's phone number, here's his email address and his information, and then RFI for AEH commercialization. So mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with you. But, look, okay, so the reason that he popped up is because he either had a project or he has awarded or been a part of another project with that mm -hmm. particular NAICS code. So if we wanted to go and really look at, you know, 
what it was, the project that he was on, you could go back here and look at his activity. Now, me personally, I just, you know, when I put that filter in there and I know that they have something to do with a project with that, you know, with that NAICS code, I would simply give them a call and just say, you know, hi, Brandon, you know, I'm with, my name is Steve Smith and I'm with blah, 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 and um, I just wanted to, you know, give you a call and introduce my company, let you know that um, I see that you had, you know, that you had an open project back, you know, a couple months back with one of my NAICS codes, and I just wanted to, you know, get my email, not my email, I'm sorry, my website um, address to you so you can see our capability statement. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then I've seen some guys try to shortcut it, you know, and they'll, they'll try to just email it to them. But what happens when you do that is because there's a link in your email, a lot of times it's going to go straight into their junk mail. They're never going to see it and they never know that you're alive, even though oh, you can spend a whole day sending out emails. What you want to do is you want to call and get their permission to send them an email with your link in it so that you can see their they can see your capability statement. Mm -hmm, Once you get mm -hmm. their permission, nobody can try, you know, nobody tries to get their their permission for anything anymore. You know what I mean? So for you to actually call them and be um, so polite as to ask their permission, can I send this to you? You A know that they're going to get it. You B know that they're going to be looking for it and then they're going to save it because mm -hmm. When something comes up that's not going to be on, you know, you might not see on a solicitation board because let's say that it's under $25,000 or something. Mm -hmm. The way the procurement officers look at that is they're not going to take the time to put out a solicitation for something so small. Like twenty five grand and under to them is crumbs. Okay? Right. I don't know about you, but I, I, I could deal with twenty five grand, you know, so it's not mm -hmm. crumbs to me. But to have your information sitting on their desk and for them to save it, because something could come across their desk and they could go, hey, you know what? Um, why don't we give this guy a call and see him? He, he, he and his team could, you know, get access to what we're looking for, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And it might be only a ten or twelve thousand dollar, you know, project, but you're building your past performance and you're, you know, you're getting a contract. And it's right. going to pay you about ten or twelve thousand dollars, even if it's only three or four thousand dollars. All we're looking for here is to start building your patterns and getting your past performance in place, and you know, start getting to know these people because right. these well, guys me, are, are the ones that are going to do it. Let me ask you this, Gina: If I don't, you know, if I don't have a quote-unquote service or a product, and I'm just brokering, how do you pursue these these uh, these agents? Uh, you know, if you're just basically a broker. Well, this is where you, I'm going to say this very lightly. So when you're brokering, I would, I would say you want to probably maybe change the term to logistics. You know what I mean? Because the logistics, right. like, you know, you can, you, you, I would want to stay away from the word broker. You want to go with, right. um, you know, I do everything logistics. So if you need something from here to here, I can figure out how to get there. You know, right. and that's your service is your logistics consultant. Do you okay. understand that? That, that so makes, I'm a yeah, that makes sense. consultant, and you know, the, and when you send them their um, the link to your website, they'll see that on there because it's going to be mm -hmm. in your capability statement. So, you know, I'm a logistics consultant, and you know, anything pretty much in in the free world that you need, um, we can get our hands on it and get it moved to wherever you need it to go. It doesn't. You're you're not calling to to sell these people anything. Your main goal in calling them is to get your your link to your website in front of their face and get permission to do that. That is the only thing you're calling to do. Because they don't, you know, they don't want to be sold on anything. You don't want to sell them anything. It's not like, you know, I mean, it's not like I'm calling to say, hey, buy my service today. You're calling sure. just to get your information in front of their face. So that when something comes up, you're the guy that they call. You're right. the guy that they remember that that called to get their permission. I just want to know if it's okay if I send you my link. Mm -hmm. What about no. uh, you know? There's I get the pens uh, for the the other company that I own. I get pens all the time with company logos on it and their website. And some of them are pretty pretty cool. I mean, they probably spent maybe three or five dollars on it. Would that be a problem to to send some of these people a pen with a, your company logo on it? I mean, I don't know. I, I, that would be more of a John question. I mean, it, that's not an area that I'm really familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, so there might be something you could ask John. I mean, I don't see if there's a problem with it. I mean, if you have a logo, 
you know what I mean? Do you have your own logo for your for your company? No, but uh, we're getting ready to get one. I'm going to have one made here probably in Houston at a graphics uh, company. Well, you can send some pens to me and John. We would appreciate some pens. I'm always <laughs> doing <everything>. <laughs> <laughs> Um But, you know, you could, I mean, especially this is where you would want to send them a pen or something like that. Let's say that, you know, you guys have a great conversation, and he says, yeah, you know what, I actually do have a couple things in mind, but go ahead and send me your information so that I have it, and I'll follow up with you next week. So mm -hmm. let's say that he calls you back next week and says, okay, we got blah, 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 blah. And you start to really build a relationship with this guy. Hey, Brandon, right. you know what? I wanted to know, do you have a direct address that I could send? I just wanted to send you, um, you know, a pen with our logo or something like that on it, if that's okay with you. Again, getting his permission. You always want to sure. be, you always want to ask for their permission to do something because they're the one, you know, that's got the, you know, just like a dog, you know, the dog is going to look at you and say, can I please have that treat? You know what I mean? They look at you and that's right. their gesture. And you're going to ask the dog, do you want this treat? You want to always ask permission, you know what I mean, to, to hold your hand out and say, is it okay if I send you guys some pens? Sure, you know, sure. Of course, okay. they want to, of course they wouldn't mind, you know, but you want to get their permission and, and find out where exactly can I send it to your desk. So sure. now you're going to be able to build that relationship with them. I don't care what anybody tells you know tells you in this industry. This the whole key to this is being transparent and building relationships. Building relationships okay. with your prime vendors, you know, the subcontract, as well as your your procurement officers. This is all mm -hmm. about relationship building. And if you are great at building relationships, you're going to do just fine. You can have. You know, I see guys all the time, like these big corporations, they got these big fancy websites with all this bing and bang and boom and all this stuff, and, you know, they've never done one contract. Why is that? Because they're behind a federal firewall that even if a procurement officer did go and try to find them, they can't just go to Yahoo, Google, or Bing and find them, right? Mm -hmm. So right. that's why we build the website the way that we do. It's formatted in a way that they can get to it, they can see it, and they can save it, you know? So it's not about, you know, who's got the biggest, you know, most, you know, animation on their website and all that stuff. This is all about relationship building. And when you can do that and you can, you know, follow John's lead on submitting a proper proposal, you know what I mean? You, we give you guys all the tools that you need. All you have to do is use them to the best of well, your ability. Let me ask you this. What would be, uh, what would be the problem with um, going to what's called, they have the matchmaking deals. Um, mm -hmm. that you can go to. Um, I can answer this you, one. Yeah. I can answer this one. Here's the thing go with ahead. the matchmaking deals. Um, before you go, before you invest money on them, send me the details and let me do the research first because I can tell you from experience, I've had people go to them and say, man, it was great, a lot of good contacts, I got a few things lined up. And then there's some of them where I've had people say, you know, I spent a buttload of money and there was only one purchasing officer there and it was 500 people trying to talk to that one purchasing officer. Right, So right. before you invest the money on something like that, let me know and I'll tell you if it's a good one or not. Sure. Uh, especially if it's local and it's, you know, you're not going to have to buy a plane ticket and a hotel and a rental car and all that other stuff, then it makes more sense. Sure. Well, I did send you a link to, it's uh, April 27th, I think it is. Uh, there's a deal in Washington D.C. It doesn't elaborate on what uh, what type of officers are going to be there, but you know it is a uh, uh, it is a um, uh, a show or, or a, a matchmaking session. Sure, and I'll send you a link to it. Okay, you got it. Okay, all right. So this is the deal with your your procurement officers. So always remember people procurement. Okay, these are where you're going to find okay. your procurement officers that you can call. Okay. This actually s serves for you as sort of a lead database, if you will. All right? Okay. Because you have so many different things that you can offer, products, supplies, you know, consultation, things like that. I mean, you literally have 51,000 people that you can call here. Mm -hmm. I mean that you can call and say, you know, hey, I want to introduce my company to you. Now, are you going to be the one making the calls or do you have like an assistant or something like that that will sit down and make no, the calls No, I'm going to be the one making the calls. Okay. You know, and, and let me just mention this, Gina. 
I, you know, I'm not out to conquer Europe in, in uh, just, you know, one, 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 yeah. one attack. You know, I, I want to start out in a defined area, and if that, you know, if that uh, contracting officer puts three or four solicitations out a day, then that's somebody I probably need to concentrate on. And then, you know, as I get more familiar with it, then I'll start, you know, expanding. But I think I need to crawl before I walk. I mean, would you agree you with me on that? Yes, you do. And the thing about it is, see how we can see where this is last active 26 minutes ago? Yeah. These are the guys you're that? going to want to call first. Because that's, those see. are the guys that are active. And you can, I mean, you can click on any of these guys. And when you say active, is that, the last, is that the last time they were online? Or is that whenever they, they, they put something out? They changed something or they put out a, a, any sort of a notice. Mm-hmm. Okay. It could be a, can and, you know, like this guy did two cancellation notices about an hour okay. ago, one about 37 minutes ago. Okay. So you can now, see that's where it comes from. Now, everything that they're doing, are they posting this on your website or are you getting this from a feed from the government website? Our IT guys do all that back work, so we, we have it all imported. It all gets I imported. See. Every five minutes it updates. So anything wow. that they, they post, post out... You may not see it on FBO until, you know, 24 hours, maybe tomorrow, but you'll get an alert here about it every five minutes if you have it set up under instant, and I'm getting ready to show you how that works. Okay. Um, so this is your procurement officers, and again, we're going to go over this again once all of your website stuff, and, and you're ready to start making calls. I just want to show sure. you this on the preliminary so that, you know, you can kind of mess around and tinker around with it, maybe set up your alerts and things like that in the meantime. So your, there's your people. If you go up here to projects, you can look up these projects based on the opportunity type. Like if I want to know an award notice, and I'm going to get to that in a second. If I want to know any solicitation, I want to hit my apply filters. Mm -hmm. And under this particular NAICS code of 5-6, what was it, 5-4? What for logistics? Yeah, I just you can just type it right in, and it'll tell you what the other codes are. Here we go: process, di physical distribution, logistics consulting. So um, that's you want to write that down too. I'm a logistics consultant. Okay. And okay, so you can see with this particular in this particular NAICS code, these are the open solicitations because I've narrowed it down to just the solicitation, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now what I didn't do is I didn't, when I did the solicitation, I need to know when it was due. So let's go to back to this. And I want it to do in the next month. Now, once you put those in there, mm -hmm. next month. Playing games with me right now. Hold on one second. Looks like my button is not working on my projects, my, ne my next month button, or my next week. Let's try that. So it was five. There we go. It looks like it's it. Yeah. That's because I probably... Okay. All right. So now this one is it's bringing us everything that's due next, within the next month. So mm -hmm. whenever you mm -hmm. put in within the next month, it's going to give you so from today until the 21st of March, and then tomorrow mm -hmm. it is going to do this update and it's going to go from tomorrow to the 22nd of March. It always it just keeps going on. So it's not like it's only going to do it for February and then I got to go set up the alert again or anything like that. Just so you know that, that that next month always starts the next day. Okay. Okay. Um, and are you familiar with the different terminology where it says like pre-solicitation, modification, award notice, things like that? Yes. Yes. I'm, okay, I'm, familiar. I'm not all the way familiar with uh, when it comes to 
um, do the drop down button to on the uh, the left go up yeah there you go uh, you know the only thing that I'm really uh, sources salt uh, uh, let's see um, combined synopsis solicitation mm -hmm. and that's the only two that really that I need to look at because uh, uh, a lot of these don't apply to me well no because your special notices those are something mm -hmm. you're always going to want to take a look at. A pre-solicitation, you're going to want to see. Um, mm -hmm. An award notice, you're going to want to see. And, and I'm going to tell you why you're going to want to see an award notice in just a second. Um, mm -hmm. Your modifications and amendments, you're going to want to see. Um, just the well, that on, justification it, and approval and stuff like that, that's not really that important. But mm -hmm. um, your special notices are like, um, there may be an event, like the one you're talking about going to in Washington, that they may put out. There may be a right. webinar, a, that's a special notice. It could be like a webinar that they're going to be doing, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the GSA is going to do a webinar or something like that. So that, that way that's a special notice and it's something that it, that it doesn't fit any other category so we're going to special notice it. Your source mm -hmm. of thought, you know, that's the one that we're, we're requesting information. We haven't put it out for bid, we haven't even decided if we're going to put it out for bid, um, but we want to know information on any company that may want to be interested in doing a project like the one we're talking about. Okay. Um, sale of surplus property. I don't really see that one a whole lot. Um, not on in, in what we do. Modification amendment. That's like that they had a solicitation that's out, but they made a change to it. They could have changed the due date. They could have changed, you know, the set aside in it. They could have changed anything. So they made it a modification. Well, um, wouldn't that be yeah, on the actual the solicitation? Wouldn't that be on uh, under the uh, the solicitation number that's showing if it there's would. a modification? It would, like this. But it just to let you know, so that if when it updates every five minutes, if there's a modification of something that you've been looking at, it mm -hmm. wants you to know that. That's why our system will see. give you that that alert. So really, uh, this website here is the same as FedBidsOps.gov, uh, but it's in your format and it's tuned to find things a lot quicker. Am yes. I correct in that? Yeah. So you're going to use your FBO, um, which John uses it like like inside and out, and I'm a, a you know I use our our system inside and out. So you're actually down the road, you're going to end up using them kind of hand in hand. <coughs> you can set up That's alerts it. inside of FBO as well. But they use something called Boolean logic, which is different than when you set up your alerts in ours. And I'm going to show you how to, you're going to do that. Okay. Um, so when you set up an alert, you can set up as many alerts as you want. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter how many, and you can set them up to be as detailed or as general as you choose them to be. The ones that are more detailed and the ones that are very important to you, you want them to be on your instant. They want them to be instant. Okay. So let's do. You can set it up by any of these um, keywords, set aside, state, agency, office, category, person, and then the kind of project that it is and when it's due. So sure. for every NAICS code that you have, you're going to want to set one up under the NAICS code and an award notice. So let's go with this real fast. It's going to be logistics. Why don't you put in medical supplies and just see what pops up. Yeah, keep in mind, too, the difference between FBO and AFPDS is FBO doesn't give you the past performance. AFPDS gives you the past performance automatically. Oh, great. And they're getting ready to, um, AFPDS is going to be able to, in the next, I think they said they're like in about the next three weeks. It's going to look a little bit different, but they're going to be doing phase two of it, which is mm -hmm. going to add the past performance in, um, and then it'll be able to, to sort of analyze and give you some sort of analyze, um analyzation dates mm -hmm. right. or in, in data so that you can see you know who got it in the past and how much they you know what they kind of spent on it right. Um, because right now it's just going to tell you you know that it's there and there's we have the the past data but even for me I have to go to some of my you know go looking for some of my clients and I go and find you know what the past performance on a particular solicitation was um, so you, you're going to use them both hand in hand, but when phase okay. two comes out, you're going to be ready. And right about then is what you should have all of your website and stuff like that done anyway. So, okay. um, so let's put in medical supplies. 
AFPDS is also going to start tracking subnets, so eventually you'll be able yeah. to use it for prime and for subcontracts instead of having okay. to use two different databases. And then down the road, they're going to add in all the state databases, so you won't have to look at your state database for one opportunity and your subnet for another subcontract opportunity and FBO for another opportunity. And eventually, everything will come out of AFPDS. You'll have one oh, wow. source for, for all contracts. Now let me ask you this, because this is a private and not a government deal, how accurate, I mean, is this like the exact term, the exact wording from the government's yes. website to your website? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, they take the actual, they, they don't make up their own solicitations and like put them in their own words, so that's not what they do. As a matter of fact, it. I'll show you one of them as soon as I can find. What kind of medical supply, like give me an example of, like how about uh, other measuring school. and controlling? So Okay. Uh, it'll be a surgical and other um, for veterinary and uh, it'll say. How about um, surgical appliance and supplies manufacturing, manufacturing, wholesalers. There you go. Medical, That's dental, and hospital equipment supplies. Okay. There you go. All right. Okay. Now, with this one, we just have the NAICS code. So it's going to bring up everything that matches that NAICS code from the past, present, and future. Right? Okay. So if we want to go in and say, all right, now I want to know when anybody is awarded a contract in this particular NAICS code, I want to know about it. Do you know why you would want to know about it? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, because it'll, it'll show you sh so, uh, your competition. Okay, so there's my, that's the next thing. Okay, so in the federal world, your competition is not always your enemy, okay, because you can build relationships with other prime vendors to get some of the subcontracting stuff done. So when you set up an award notice and you get you find out that this guy got the an award, let's go look at it real fast, okay, he got a $15,681 award from the VA because mm -hmm. he's a service-disabled veteran-owned business. Okay. Right. Do you but have any set-asides like that? No, but let me mention this. Whenever it comes to set-asides like this, I, I, I don't even really look at them because uh, it's not a level playing field in my mind. I mean, the government is basically, <laughs> and I could be wrong, in this, but I, it, I feel like the government's handing this transaction to them on a silver platter and saying, sign they right are. here. I they mean, are. That's, that's the way it seems. Yeah, so it's they not are. a level playing field whenever I'm white, you know, I've got a little bit of money, and, you know, I, I, I've got something in my head, you know, and I don't get high every day or something like that, you know. So not to disrespect, you know, this these individuals here, but, I, you know, the, the system seems like it's totally stacked against me and, and, and the way it all works. Well, that's why they have set-asides, is that because, you know, they have to do a certain percentage of their um, government contracts to these, these guys. But... On the other side of this, you can make friends with this guy so that it's not no longer a, a, not a level, level playing field for you. Because if they just give this guy the contract, right, now you mm -hmm. make friends with, you know, it's, it's who you have in the sandbox, not how many people are in the sandbox. I see. Okay? So you bring your toys, and you're going to share your toys with certain people in the sandbox. But if they, you know, if they want to take their toys and go home, they can but, you know, it's, it's all about who's in there. That's why you want the right people in your sandbox with all the coolest toys. Mm -hmm. So this guy is a service-disabled veteran-owned business. Now, this contract isn't a big contract. It's only 15000 you know, a little, almost $16,000. However, this is where you can see Franklin Young International Incorporated. So mm -hmm. the first thing we want to do is you see this, and we go, okay. So we can see how big their company is. They're about 11 employees, not huge. You know, this is who handles their federal contracting stuff. And if right. you wanted to do a little bit of homework on them, you could look at their website. Um, and then this is what they do, analytical laboratory instrument manufacturing. So they're a manufacturer. Don't you want to have friend, be friends with a manufacturer of some of these things? Because you could get your hands on them if you needed it in a different project, right? Yeah, but uh, when whenever you say he's a manufacturer, uh, well, he could, be do, he could be doing slides for all we know. Right. I mean, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. So what we do, so the first thing you would want to do is you want to call Ronald up and say, hey, Ronald, or, or even Margaret, hey, guys, I just want to say congratulations. Um, I see that you guys got that $15,000 contract from the VA. You know, well done. 
you know, really a good job. I mean, we were thinking about doing it, but I'm not a, um, you know, service disabled veteran owned business, and you guys are. So I wanted to call, and I just want to say congratulations for one, and for two, I wanted to see if it's okay if I send you a link to our, my site, because Anytime we can do any kind of, you know, business, either federal contracting, subcontracting, any kind of business we can do together, you know, <laughs> we, should, we should really consider doing something together. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This guy, Ronald, is going to say, um, so you just called to congratulate me? Like, who does that? Anybody? <laughs> you know, so who calls your competitor and says, hey, congratulations? Nobody. He's always going to remember you. He's always going to. Re Ronald's going to. That's the guy that called me to congratulate me when I got that little that little contract. Right. And anytime something comes up, he's going to go. I, I'm going to call him. I'm going to see. You know what I what I can do with him. You're going to. You guys are going to make friends. And now he has a set aside that you don't. So you can see something come out that you you may want to bid on. It's right there in your your local area, but you're not a, an SDOV. But you can always call him and say, Hey, Ronald. There's something out there that I really want to I really want to bid on. It's right here in my in my neck of the woods. You know, maybe we could consider. You know, you bid on it, and then you know, I'll fulfill it. And you know, fifty percent of something is better than zero percent of nothing. Right. Right. This is right. what you do. You start building relationships with these other vendors, especially with the ones that have set asides. You don't want to. You know, those are like that. That that that's not like the SLD class anymore. You see what I mean? Those are the right. kids that you want to bring in your group because you want to play with them. Well, you know, let me ask you a question. Most people look at it as, go ahead. Well, you know, the whole the whole game plan here and, and, and visiting with uh, John and, and doing the research and everything, the whole game plan is here is, you know, let me get 15, 20 contracts underneath my belt my first year of business. And then, yeah. you know, and, and then, you know, slowly but surely start to, to, you know, carve out a niche. And, I mean, at that point, you know, if if we're doing medical supplies and we're really you know homing in on that, and it's it's there's a lot of profitability in it. You know, I don't have a problem with going to you know rent a five thousand square foot warehouse and buy in bulk of of ABC product from Welch Allen or or whoever, and then uh -huh. and then you know because that way I can consider myself as a wholesaler, a supplier, and actually have the product on hand. You know, if it if it if it opens up to that, I mean, listen. My overall goal here is is five years to 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 have this company built up where I can take it public, and you know, for it to be a monster, and mm -hmm. you know, with uh, two you know like uh, you know forty fifty employees and really have it rocking and rolling. But you know, I've got to start somewhere, and this is a great right. opportunity. That that's that's the whole just behind this is not to make a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year and go on down no. the road. You know, no. I want to make a couple no. of million dollars a year and you then just go got, down the road. When you came aboard with us, you just got behind the seat of an 18-wheeler, you know, behind the wheel of an 18-wheeler. You have probably 10 gears that you're going to go through between now and five years. You're going to go this way, then you're going to turn your wheel, you're going to switch gears, you're going to, you know what I mean? You, you got some, a lot of learning and stuff like that to do. Oh, absolutely. And we're going we're gonna to stay right with you the entire time. So you know, I mean, you just you just got yourself an 18 wheeler that's going to take you anywhere. You just got to be you know ready and willing to drive. Um, right. Once once you get your website done and you spent some time with John while we, while you're waiting for that, I'm going to come back to this and we're going to revisit this you know this AFPDS because by then I think that you're going to have the the opportunity to be able to really dig into it and really know what what we're going to put in there. I can help you set up your alerts. I can have, you know, so that I can, we could actually do the same thing like John did where he'll, we can do the, the screen share and then I can give you the rights and then I can tell you, nope, click here, you know, nope, we want to go over here to alert, then we want to go over here to add alert, you know, and I can have you doing it while I'm showing you how to do it, you know, so it's sort of a hands-on, I'll teach you how to set them up and then you're going to learn as you go that, you know, maybe I don't like this alert so much or maybe I'm getting a bunch of you know, nothing really that pertains to me from right. this particular alert. So I'm just going to go and I'll, you know, you can get rid of it. You're going to learn which ones you want to put on your instant, which ones you want hourly, daily, or weekly. You know, your weeklies might be something that you're considering down the road. Maybe, you know, a, a different industry. Um, maybe it's not just medical supplies. Maybe it's um, dental supplies or something Absolutely. like that, you know, surgical mm -hmm. Okay, 
you're thinking about getting into that, but we want to see how much traction that it has. So therefore, it, you know, you want to set that up, that NAICS code up as a weekly so you can kind of get an eyeball of what, you know, if you're getting anything from it. That way you can decide if I want to add that to my SAM registration and our, um, you know, in your, your menu of services. Um, but you don't want to set everything up on instant because you're going to get an email every five minutes and it's going to be drive you bat chat crazy. You know, so you gotta, we got to figure out which ones work best for you. And that's going to come along when, when your website is done and, like I said, that you've been working with John um, while we're waiting for all that to get done. There's a lot of stuff in here, and there's a lot of stuff that I can teach you in this. And then you're going to learn to kind of merge the FBO stuff that John teaches you and the AFPDS stuff that I teach you. And it's going to be a nice little, you know, it'll be like a fork in the road. Here we go. You know what I mean? And you just keep on right. driving. That's all you got to do. Right. Let me ask you this, just off the, the subject. I, I know a lot of political people, and oftentimes I go to uh, events where uh, I'm invited to attend, and there's some pretty, you know, it's pretty big military people there. And, you know, I, you know I, I've, I've never had a reason to really approach them until, you know, and, and I started getting into this. But, you know, is, is that in my best interest to approach some of these, these individuals that are very high up or not even waste my time? It kind of depends on what they do. You know what I mean? Like if they're not, if they're not into the procurement side of things, I mean, it probably wouldn't hurt. I mean, <laughs> well, let's put it this John. way. I mean, we just went, to, we just went to uh, Fort Hood, and mm -hmm. um, I went with some uh, some Texas politicians or a Texas mm -hmm. politician. They rolled out the red carpet for us. The only thing I didn't, I did not meet the uh, the head guy of the base, which is uh, or the tank division rather. His name is Colonel Fox. Uh, Todd M. Fox is his name. Um, but you know, I did meet the guy underneath him. Uh, the, and when we went into the room to to sign in and everything to go to get our credentials, there was the president's picture. There was Todd M. Fox. And then the guy that was with us was underneath him, and I asked him. He said, "That's that's the 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 command chain right there." And I was impressed. I mean, everywhere we went, every one of these soldiers was, you know, saluting this guy. And I mean, it was really big, and uh, I was impressed. Well, if but, you've got uh, access to them, I mean, put your name out there. What is it going to hurt when some when they need something for the base or whatnot? Who do you think gives the order to? put the solicitation out or find this, you know what I'm saying, when, when they, they give the order, those procurement officers got to scatter and, you know, like little ants to figure out where they're, where are we going to get it. He wants, right. you know, he wants 15 things of toothpaste right now. Where are we going to get it? You mm. see? So, he puts the order out. So you, right. you go right up that food chain and, you know, they know that you exist. They're going to say, hey, call him and get me 15 things of toothpaste. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, it's going to take some time for me to learn all this, and, and you said that I am already logged into this th this thing right here? You have on your, um, when you log into your secure account, and you remember with um, Angela where you, you had to log in, you set a password? Sure. Okay, so when you, you log in with your username and your password, like you did like that, to that other one, um, it's going to have a spot in there that will say AFPDS. And you okay. can just log right in that way. You just click on that I button, see. it'll log right in. This is also okay. like a, um, you know, inside of your AFPDS, we'll go back to this, there's a learning center here. Okay. And this is on one of those days that you, you know, you're just bored, you want to read up on some stuff. Or maybe, you know, you've got a question for John, but you can't reach him at that second. Maybe you can go in here and, you know, pop something up in there and maybe get your question answered. Or, you know, just for, for fun, you can sit there and, and watch some of this stuff and read some of this stuff. It's really interesting and I, I try to do it, you know, once a day just to see what is in there that, that wasn't in there before because I always try to keep, you know, my knowledge up for my clients. Sure, sure. Well, I, and the next thing, are, are we almost out of time or do you have more time? Um, we're almost out, but... Okay. Well, the next thing I want to go over is I want to... Um, I know nothing about subcontracting underneath these people, and I don't know how it works. I've got a few details on it, but I haven't studied it, and uh, that's something I would like to, to go over um, uh, next time and, and maybe uh, and, and do that again. Yeah, 
So um, and when we do this second time, when we do this again, I'm going to show you how that you're going to be able to find these, these uh, prime vendors. And that's why we have vendors here. Mm -hmm. um, they're actually working on my states button right now because it was I was trying to get it to, um, you know, the, the filter right here. There's a little quirk with it. And while they're doing the, the phase two, this thing has been giving me a little bit of a problem. But mm -hmm. what you could do, and this is how you can go in here and look at these, is um, I'm just going to put anything in here, okay? All other okay. Mis miscellaneous manufacturing, okay? This is going to tell you all the manufacturers that are, you know, in. Put, now, usually you can narrow it down with the state, but that button's giving me a hard time. So even when I put the state in there, it doesn't stay in there. Um, but again, you can see who's got what set aside, and you could start picking out your friends this way. You know, mm -hmm. when you see that they're tribally owned. When you see that they're, you know, I don't even know if an 8A people are in here um, because they're always in there. Um, but you can see, you know, and you can start making friends with them. But you want to wait till your website's done because you want to be able to have something to send to them. You know, mm -hmm. I want to send something to you so you can see it. And that website is good because um, it not only, like, you could just send a capability statement to them, but they can't, you know, turn around and send you an email from that capability statement. You see what I mean? They can actually right. go to your website, see everything about you, and then they can just go to the Contact Us page, and they can actually send you an email from your website. So it gives them another way to contact you, aside from just calling you. Um, mm. So you want to wait till that that's done. But see Tactical and Rescue Gear? This guy is a veteran-owned business. Um, any woman-owned businesses, any, anything like that, you just want to, like I said, you just rethink the way that you, you know what I mean? Like, Okay, so my competition is not always my competition in the federal sector because you guys can do a lot together and you can find friends well, but, that benefit you. But does the federal government, like you got Northrop Grumman there, does the federal government require them to go and seek somebody out to subcontract because of the size of the contract? What they do is because they have to do a certain percentage to meet their goals. They have to like like 5%, I think, of the small businesses. 5% of the contracts have to go to a woman-owned small business. They have a gigantic budget. Okay, I mean, they get some crazy, stupid amount of number. Like, they're making the money under their desk every October 1st. But it's only if they meet their goals. They have to do 23% of the small businesses, and then they won't get penalized, and they'll get, you know, as much money as they are wanting or needing. But if they don't meet their goals, then they don't, they get penalized, and they get, you know, tipped for it. So they have to say, you know, it used to be like the good old boys could just say, you know, I, I'm just going to, the, these companies kept getting all the stuff, you know what I mean, they kept getting all the contracts because, you know, there was no set-asides put in place. There was nothing that you could do that made yourself any different. Now they say anything that's under $150,000 has to go to a small business, and anything, you know, anything that's under twenty five grand is definitely going to a small business. Mm -hmm. so well, I've noticed they, that they're... They do that. I noticed that there there is a lot of contracts that do go to, to total small business. It's a set aside yeah. for total small business, and um, you know, and that's that's my category, and that's probably the only set that's not a set aside. But you know, it is a set aside. It is, it is, it is a set aside. So yeah, you're right. It is. So I mean, and there's a lot of there's a lot of contracts that go out to total small business because, like I said, 23 percent of the contracts have to go to those. Mm, I mean, they have okay. to go to a small business. So whenever I, I mean, I, I'm just going to use, I'm, I'm not even going to use fedbizops.gov. I'm just going to use your website in order to, to do uh, contracts or bid proposals. Well, you're going to, you're still going to, you're still going to use fedbizops. And John is going to, you know, teach you a lot about fedbizops. So you're going to use them actually hand in hand. Um, because a lot of times it will say in the solicitation, please um, submit it electronically through Fed, uh, FBO or Fed Connect or, or you know, the, the other things that are out there. And John teaches you how to maneuver through those. So, you, okay. yes, you are going to use FedBizOps. Um, we don't ever tell you, no, don't do that because, you know, we, because we get our information from it doesn't mean that it's not still an amazing uh, system. But they're making a lot of changes to it that a lot of people don't like. So um, you're just going to use the both hand in hand, and that's where – where we, we come in and John and I just stay very close to you and you know anytime you have a question or anything like that about AFPDS all you have to do is call us or call okay. me 
call Angela, call John, and like I said, I'll go over this with you a hundred times if that's what it takes. Um, but you got to remember one thing: you cannot break this system. It doesn't break. So you can be in here messing around with it all you want. You can't break it. So okay. don't be ever be afraid. Like, oh, what did I just do? You, whatever. We can get the information. It's not something that you can. Oh God, what did I just do to their system? There's nothing you can do to it that's going to hurt it. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this: In your professional opinion, how how far am I away from like, you know, getting my first contract and so forth? Like well, with all the knowledge that marketing. I need now. Yeah, with with your marketing stuff, like having your website and stuff like that. I think what you're going to do is you're going to find that when you call and you really, you know, talk to these procurement officers once the website's done and you start building your relationships. I don't, you know, I don't see where it should be very long. I mean, usually I think it just really depends too, you know what I mean? I don't know your products and stuff, but once you can start building and talking to these people, um, you're going to find that you're going to have a lot of, you know, a lot of luck with it. But like there's a guy, I'll tell you, he's in Texas, he's in Houston, and he does weed control, um, like landscaping services and whatnot. And I showed him how to do this because I, I went through the whole process. His website was done, everything. He's one of my clients. And he's one of my favorite clients, actually. Um, and I said, okay, Clay, we're going to go through this. So I taught him how. I said, you know, I told him what to say. And then he said, okay, well, um, I know that I'm probably not going to get a lot of, um, you know, talk time with these people, but I'm going to try on Friday. This is on a Wednesday. I'm going to try Friday to give some of them a call. So he called. And um, he made his, you know, he said, I, I was very surprised because I talked to six people. They were all very nice, you know, friendly fire. And two of them offered me projects. Really? Yeah. But he's actually, he actually part. has a product and I don't. I mean, I'm a service. But so. logistics, are you kidding me? Logistics is a big, yeah, no, but logistics, everything that moves around in this country has to have somebody moving it. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. You know, it's just it's just a really a matter of time, and it's going to take a little bit of patience because we got to get the website built. You know, you got to have something that you can hand to them so they can see, or you know, that you're gonna be able to send to them so they can see it and what you do. You know, and just start building these relationships. This is all that this is about. Right. That's it. Okay. Well, um, so the next step is. Uh, um, Wait for your website. I'm, okay, so we need to. Wait and for you're going to work with John. Yeah, but you could be working with John in the meantime, too. I mean, he's got his daily class every day that I'm sure you're part of, right? Sure, sure, yes. Yeah, you can be on that every single day. Yeah. Okay, well, um, you're, what is your name? Gina, is that right? Gina, yep. Gina, okay. Well, Gina, if you Always would send me your... Always never duplicated. <laughs> okay. Uh, send me your, uh, web, your uh, contact information, if you would, because I do not have that. Okay, I will be sure to. Okay. I'll either do it or I'll have Angela do it because I think be she has it, but I'll, I'll, I'll send it over to you too, okay? That will be fine. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you, and I'm, I'm here, you know, if you ever need anything as far as okay. ASPDS goes, okay? Well, I'm sure I'll be in touch. <laughs> I look forward to it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gina. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Bye-bye. No you, problem. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.